Hello and uh, welcome Pau, who is going to be speaking about the Open Food Network. Okay, hello. Uh, hello everyone. Um, that's me, I'm Pau Pérez. Uh, I work at Coopdeps, a uh, cooperative in Barcelona, and spend my days working on Open Food Network. And that's my Twitter account. So let's start with some vision. So the goal that we have at Open Food Network is that we want to help improve food systems. So currently, big supermarket chains control the food market throughout the world, which has bad implications for social and environment, and also doesn't take into account the participants in the market, which are the food producers and consumers. So our idea is that we want to help those small-scale food enterprises that distribute through short food supply chains. And we understand that's a way to uh, bring resilience to systems and make it more competitive. So what we found out is that those small-scale food enterprises, they share 90% of their problems. So all around the world, people have the same problems trying to distribute those products to their local communities. So we ended up with, it's an international network of uh, local projects that try to help those small food scale enterprises. It started in 2012 in Australia and then suddenly started growing in France, UK, um, Norway, Spain, now in the States, in Canada and many other countries. And the last one, Belgium. So. The idea is that if we all share these problems, we could share the software, and then if we put all the money together, we can have a bigger impact, because uh, those small uh, local communities, they cannot afford developing a software for all those problems. And we can see the software and the knowledge behind that software as a common good that we need to protect. And there's obviously politics behind it, and I'm gonna go just very briefly on it. But we consider, at the global level, we consider this software and that knowledge like a common good that we need to preserve. But also those local communities, like uh, every country that I showed, uh, they have the local community, they're people that want to help on that end. Um, and they have their local projects as a common as well, which means that they will protect that common and normally they organize themselves as cooperatives. And also at the lowest level, these local communities are made of uh, what we call food hubs, which is those small enterprises that distribute food throughout those short food supply chains. And obviously there is connections between all of them and the needs of the food hubs come up to the global level and the international level takes into account those needs and tries to solve them with the software. So a little bit how we work in this project. So the key point here is that we have a single money pot, which means that all those local projects, Spain, Canada, USA, Australia, they get funds from public institutions sometimes, from other ways, crowdfunding campaigns, and we put the money in a single pot. And then from that pot, we finance and we fund the development team, and we try to reach that goal together. So the global team, it's more or less these people. It's people from all those local projects. And yeah, we gather every year and we try to visit one of those local projects. That was last summer in Barcelona, but the year before we met in Australia. And that's where we discuss what are the next priorities, what we feel the project is going to be, and how it needs to evolve, taking into account those needs of the food hubs. Then what we have is what we call the voting process. So we have a discourse and there we share, coming from the gatherings, we share what we think we need to implement next or maybe discuss or work on. And then people on the global team vote, add their votes, and then at the end of this voting process, we decide what's gonna be next. Then we have what we call the pipeline. So basically this is uh, run by the core team and we put work to do on one end and then we have releases on the other one. And what we organize that with four backlogs using ZenHub, which is an extension of uh, GitHub. And then we pick, we order the priorities in each of them and then we pick the top ones and they fit the dev ready column. 
where the core team is going to pick them up and other contributors and, and implement them. Then we have what we call the code review and merge process, which is run by few people from the core team. And basically, we have two-step approval processes. So you need the approval of your pull request by two people from the core team. And then a tester is going to pick it up, uh, give her approval, and then the tester moves the issue to the ready to go. And then one of those core team members merges the pull request. And as you can see, I think we're a very welcoming community, and we really encourage people joining the project. And then that feeds these sort of biweekly releases. We don't have a set schedule for them, uh, but that's mostly when we do it. And we put a lot of effort on it, because we think that's the way to bridge the gap between the local communities and the food hubs, which are not technical people. Uh, we explain them what we built, what we improved, what we fixed, and we follow the change log uh, categories. And obviously, we name our releases after food. So let's get into detail about tech. So basically, what we build is a software which is a distributed marketplace for those small scale food enterprises. It looks like this on the front side. So this is the experience for uh, one of those eaters from a food hub anywhere in the world. And it's a basic e-commerce experience. But it has a back office built with free. But what we added in top of a spree is the layer of enterprises, which means that you can have multiple shops in uh, an instance. And this is how it looks. So we have spree e-commerce what we call the network on top, which allows to connect those food hubs between each other. And then we have this custom shop from that I showed, which is not uh, Spree's code. So then the stack is plain all Ruby on Rails with Postgres and Angular JS for this custom shop form. So nothing really fancy, but it works. So one thing that we need to take into account is that OFN instances, what we call OFN instances, each one of those local projects, they have an isolated server. Uh, so there is a database per country region, and there is no connection between them. So each of those instances is uh, offered a SaaS uh, by those local projects, which in turn are uh, affiliates of the Open Food Network. And the architecture is very simple, the infrastructure very, very simple, single machine, VPS, with a unicorn and PostgreSQL, because the scale that we have, and since we split that into countries, it's very low traffic, we can survive with that so far. And then we organize that with Ansible scripts, we have provisioning and deployment there, and we also share that repo. So it's the code, but also the configuration management. And that makes it really scalable and easy to share between countries. But then, obviously, there are many problems into this. The first one is dependency management. That's something that, because of the history of the project, it wasn't really taken into account. Uh, the people that started, they were rather junior people back in 2012. And it wasn't something that was taken into account. And what we face is that our spree version is from 2012. And that's a huge problem, because obviously Rails version depends on it, Ruby version depends on it, and that's why we have Rails 3.2, Ruby 2.1, which are both abandoned. And it's also a problem with Angular, because now Angular is running on 7, and we are Angular 1.5. So we have a huge problem there. And we've been working more than a year on the Esprit upgrade to migrate to the next version, the major one. Uh, but it's a huge challenge to be up to date. Another problem is that many instances can find tech people. That's particularly important for Canada. And the people leading the project there, they weren't technical people. So it's hard for them to reach to developers. And the way to solve this, we think it's also communalizing DevOps. So we started sharing the code, and then we shared the Ansible scripts. We need to share as well the way we organize the DevOps, because these people, we cannot pretend them to find tech people. And that's particularly interesting for um, Belgium, 
So they started four months ago, and there is no tech people because we also share the duty of deploying and provisioning their servers, and that's slowing a lot the barrier of entry for new instances. Obviously, we would like to have faster delivery, and it takes time to test releases, and we want to automate that as much as possible. And then the biggest one, which is what we call the signal instance, and now the project is getting traction and more countries are joining. But as, again, as happened with Belgium, we don't want people to invest money on infrastructure or technical stuff that they can't. We want them to invest the money on the project itself, and then we will organize together globally and we'll share the duties and make it easier for uh, new countries to join and also share the expenses of running an instance. That's what's going to happen now with Portugal because they're joining the Catalan and the Spanish uh, instance. And we'll see how it goes. It's going to be a huge challenge, but a huge game changer. And so we need more hands, as you can see. And I really encourage you to join the network. And please go visit the repo and help us out. Thank you very much. little bit of time for questions, so if somebody has questions. Yep. Uh, speak up. Yeah, we are somehow, and that's because the way it started in Australia, it was a solution for them, and then UK came, and they wanted the same, but they were the teams were isolated themselves. They had technical people, so we are trying to overcome that and that's we are looking forward with this, with this joint effort with Portugal, because that might lead to a European instance, and that might help and, and resolve this centralized, um, everyone can join the team, you know what I mean? The project. We had discussions a couple of years ago about blockchain and all that stuff, and we think that we're struggling already with this very simple stack. So we want to keep it simple, manageable, and, and easy for people to join. And then when the project grows, maybe we will think of these technologies. Yeah. Any more questions? So that's a problem that we want to solve, and it's going to change a lot the project. Um, the thing is that we, we first want to have data um, on our databases, and then together we'll decide, analyzing the data, what can we do. But we're already discussing with people actually here in Belgium uh, that investigate more these logistics part. But that's a key point for all those small food, food hubs. Yeah, definitely. Thank you very much.